21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and we are one Hear now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one we can make a difference, yeah, we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun. Well, if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, oh, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far. First century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside. Hi there. I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is a 21st Century Superhuman show. And today I have with me a wonderful friend named Tonson Fairmont. Tonson, how are you today? Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, it's really wonderful to be here together. I love your energy. I love the way you think. I love the way you perceive our world. And you are somebody who I would call has achieved a level of mastery in this world. And we're going to talk today about your journey. And one of the reasons we're going to talk about your journey is because we've been living for a long time under the fiat currency system, the debt system, the money lo loaning and laundering systems, and especially a lot of the visionaries, those who dream of creating new earth and a better world and just having better lives and helping others who need assistance are looking for ways for solutions to how to have abundance, how to get beyond this system, which in a way is kind of an illusion. So energy flows, currency flows, the abundance of the universe flows all the time and you've done some really practical things in this world which you're going to tell us about but you've also had a very amazing life and i can't wait to hear about it i'm really excited to hear your story share about this today and say how you've managed to work through what seem like some of the barriers in the the financial system, the economic system, and in living a life that is filled with abundance, with visions and dreams coming true. Well, thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you okay. so much. And uh, the admiration is mutual. <laughs> Great. Well, go ahead. You've, I know you've got some slides, and we're going to just go right to your story. So uh, it's a beautiful day here in Santa Barbara, California. I'm looking out my window at the ocean. <clears throat> And there are some paragliders flying around over the hill. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, doves coming on the bird feeders and bird baths and uh, a pool. It's, uh, it's quite a nice scene. And, and yet, as you said, so many people are in bondage and have been experiencing insufficient freedom, financial yes. freedom and spiritual and other kinds of freedom, political, legal, and so on. Yes. And we've... Uh, accumulated a few of the most breakthrough solutions, some of the cream de la cream of solutions for uh, freeing people from some of the enslaving influences on this planet. Yes, you the have. The image you see on the screen is uh, Brilliance and Commerce, which is my little company, and it's here to serve you. Uh, private placement platforms, uh, it's one of the uh, things that we consult in, House of Freedom, International Natural Law Trusts, we're going to talk about today, to take uh, people out of the uh, risk and um, enslaving systems of what has been uh, in the monetary system in the past on the planet. Yes, yes, in the past. And we're going to talk about uh, 
some of the things that Brilliance in Commerce does. It's a project of La Verite, which is French for the truth. Um, we have the trust is able to take people into a, a level of freedom in operating uh, their lives that many people have never dreamed of. Yes. And it's one of the finest on the planet. The Liberty Debt Elimination System for Americans um, eliminates unsecured debts uh, with an extremely high success rate. The trust is usable by people all over the world. So for, for those nice. outside the United States, pay attention about the trust, but uh, the debt elimination system is effective for those that have debts based in institutions in the US. Great. And then we have affiliation special offers with a variety of freedom developing and financial independence programs. And we'll just say right now, I am an affiliate of yours and um, I have a couple of under our um, programs on my website. Um, I have links to the debt elimination program and to the trust, the natural law trust. And so people can research that at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com and they can also sign up under me to be to work with you as well. And I will show your links uh, later in the in the show. Great. So uh, you will have the links to these uh, products and services and these breakthrough technologies. Uh, we are members of the Worldwide Charter for Fair International Commerce, so you can see that on the website as well. And so uh, I'm the founder and the consultant. I've been a speaker and an author, and I'll get into all of that. And uh, Carrie, you had asked me to go into a little bit about my life. So uh, <laughs> before we get into the financial aspect, let's have some fun with just some Yes, facts. because I think how you got to where you are, how you woke up, what 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 were the the experiences in your life that turned you on to your own higher consciousness path because i know that the reasons that you do these things here has to do with higher consciousness it has to do with being awake being awake in the dream i like to say yes well i'll start uh, near the beginning um this is How a gorgeous. picture when i was about uh, three or four <laughs> i've got chills it's beautiful with my loving mother. Yes. And um, I grew up moving all over the United States and Europe because my father was in the US Air Force and later in the US civilian civil service and he kept getting transferred every few years. And so I got an, an equal exposure to East West and, and, <laughs> and Europe. Nice. So I also felt very strange uh, being on this planet at a young age. I kind of felt like, did I get off on the wrong planet? <laughs> and I know that feeling. Absolutely. And I <laughs> well, know a lot of other people do A lot do of people too. can relate to that. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful you know, picture. Memories of heavenly um, realms that I've lived in. <laughs> um, and you come into this planet and you're like, uh oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's some more images when I was growing up. That's about 10. Uh, and um, that's about age 18. Wow, look at you. That is gorgeous. That's when I was starting to come into my spiritual um, epitomes. A lot of visions, a lot of uh, experiences of higher consciousness. I was traveling around a lot, uh, seeking and uh, between high school and college, I was uh, attending a lot of conferences and visiting temples and ashrams and communities and communes and festivals. And uh, I was also a musician and performing at a lot of uh, events. And so it was quite a time of exploration. Very cool. And then in uh, the early 70s, I um, got involved with uh, Maharishi and Transcendental Meditation, and I became a student at his university, which required that I look a little more conservative. And so that's, that's young, amazing. Uh, Those are real 70s suits, that's too. I little, love it. Suit and tie on, <laughs> a little bit shorter hair. Very cute. <laughs> yeah. And here's another uh, photo of that me on the right there. And where is that? That is in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. One of the places I sojourned. Nice. Yeah. So Maharishi said, absolute bliss consciousness belongs to the depths of everyone's heart. Mm. So 
he was my first major teacher in this life, and he is through whom I received the breakthrough in consciousness. Started Beautiful. having direct experience of the unified field, the unbounded pure bliss consciousness. And I was also initiated into transcendental meditation, and I was at a gathering with Maharishi in about, I think around 1970, 71. Yes. Yes, that was, those were the days when he was first becoming world famous. And yes, and that was out of thousands Humboldt. of people worldwide. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What an amazing. And there were hundreds of people when I was out at Humboldt at the gathering that was there. Yeah, really. Humboldt, beautiful. California. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I saw videos of that conference, but <laughs> I came along just a couple of years after that. <laughs> so you were yeah. early. I think you're a couple of years younger than me. So right in that same time frame. And this is um, MIU Fairfield, uh, Iowa. This mm -hmm. is the university, Maharishi International University, where I attended. Beautiful. 74, 75, that, that time. And what did your parents think of this? No, they loved it. In fact, they, they participated in the meditation with me. Nice. Yes. Very cool. Is this a more recent photo of you there? It's a more recent photo. It's 2018 yeah. because I didn't have one of me standing in front of the, the dome <laughs> right? There, uh, from the 70s. So I mm -hmm. just inserted this one, but that's a good picture of the, the dome and the solar panels out front. The domes are famous for where the yogic flying and deep meditations take place. And scientific research has shown how it has been bringing improvements in the global atmosphere. Nice. After attending for a few years there, I moved on to the European branch, uh, Maharishi European Research University in Salisbury, Switzerland. This is a, a photo of that location. And I attended the teacher training to become a teacher of the meditation, plus the uh, advanced course in the Age of Enlightenment governor training course. And that's the main headquarters. It's still there today. Um, it was at that time called the capital of the age of enlightenment. And I think wow. today we call it some kind of, uh, um, uh, it's, it's more used for the Ayurveda today. Uh -huh. So people can go there to the same location today and have the in-house, in-residence treatments to perfect the physical health and learn that, meditation if one hasn't learned meditation. That before. is gorgeous. It, do you think they built those buildings or you think the buildings were already there? Oh, they were there. It was yeah. uh, a hotel and uh -huh. converted into the uh, capital. Uh, gorgeous. But it happens to face east, which is one of the main um, priorities in mm -hmm. Vedic architecture. Nice. This was the Victoria Jungfrau Hotel in Interlaken, Switzerland. Uh, Interlaken is where you, Mount Jungfrau uh, is, which is where B James Bond movies were filmed. And oh, wow. <laughs> this hotel was uh, where nobility and royalty stayed. It was every room was like appointed with incredible uh, stately decorations. And this became an ashram for almost six months uh, wow. when we were about 300 of us were in deep meditation practicing with Maharishi. And that's why I learned the advanced. But Anjali's Yoga Sutra is called the TM Cities program, which right. started yogic flying, which is an advanced form of the meditation where one can learn to uh, first open the heart. Mm -hmm. There are sutras because that's the place to begin to make sure that any powers that you gain are based in love. Nice. And secondly, powers of the mind and then third powers of the body. Nice. So here's some photos of the powers of the body. Wow. Yogic flying which is intended not for circus display or for impressing people. It's intended only to accelerate one's evolution of consciousness and uh, help radiate beneficial influences in the environment. Beautiful. Yeah. And they call it the Maharishi effect, creating coherence and harmony. So the combination of either the meditation by itself or the advanced practice with the cities are intended to accelerate the infusion of the unified field's influence. Sattva is the frequency of light and love and peace, Beautiful. which are scientifically measurable um, when large groups get together and practice this. This is one large group in 1983. Wow, in I just Iowa. have chills. 
It was called a taste of utopia experience. Mm. There were about 7,000 people attending that. Everybody's got coats on. Or yeah, long. that was, was that was chilly. a moment. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, amazing. I just keep getting chills as you're telling the stories. Very beautiful. And I think how lucky, blessed, and chosen, you know, our souls chose to come in at the time we did and to be part of these dispensations. Um, I just feel so like what a treasure. Yes, same here. Yeah, and you too. I mean, you've you've had uh, a life of the dawning of the yes. higher consciousness already that you came in with when you were born yes. and then expanding and expanding. Yes, absolutely. So. And we've had these waves of these teachers that came in in the 1900s. And I mean, even the 18, there's people I was following yeah. who came in the 1800s. And so these waves of enlightened beings that came to give this dispensation are just really really amazing these are the evidences that world history is in a transition period because yes. the 20th century was one of the bloodiest and most destructive centuries the world has mm. ever known but at the same time these high light influences have been pouring in as well yes so the light is pouring in and we are in the great shift and even chaos is part of that chaos and chaos the light part of that. both the yep. pot is being stirred as i'm kind of <laughs> saying everything is expanding the positive the negative everything yes it's just that the negative has a limit um, yes that you know eventually uh, destructiveness destroys itself absolutely we say it is disintegrating it can no longer hold form as the light grows yes Whereas the positive just keeps on growing and accelerating. Um, this a little message, the first global peace project was inspired by amazing evidence that groups of specialist meditators called yogic flyers or TM Siddhas create peaceful conditions in their surrounding locality. The research shows that when enough of these meditators practice their meditation together in a group, then peace breaks out. <laughs> yes. Crime falls and other quality of life indicators all suddenly improve. Yes. The number required to achieve this miracle is not large. The actual number of TM Siddhas needed to produce a dramatic and immediate outbreak of peace in any area is the square root of 1% of the surrounding population. This formula had worked many times for small towns, large cities, and even whole countries. But the big question was, would it work for the whole world? Yes, and I bring this up in my book too, those um, numbers, very important stuff. So here's some uh, research on the brain functioning, optimizing brain functioning, showing maximum coherence as measured by EEG, the electroencephalograph. Wow. Um, you can see in the chart there before the yogic flying began, and mm -hmm. then it suddenly increases to maximum coherence during the practice and then goes back down afterwards. Awesome. That was one nice thing that Maharishi did too. He brought out a lot of the science of what, yes, what proper meditation was doing. He himself was a scientist. He had a degree in physics mm. uh, and he surrounded himself with some of the world's greatest physicists, especially wow. and their scientists. And from the beginning, he encouraged people to scientifically measure the claims that right. both he and the meditators were making. Right. Yeah. And I know I've listened to John Hagland a lot. And um, Hagland. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. So and Maharishi has left this realm, right? He's no longer in body. Right. right. What, what year did he depart? 2008. So at the ripe age of 90. Wow. Yeah, and healthy right up until he left. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And John Hagland is now president of MIU. And right. He, has his PhD in physics from Harvard. Right. And he's won a lot of awards and he's made a lot of major contributions to yes. the scientific community. Mm -hmm. I quoted him quite a bit in my books because he was really speaking a lot of this truth on a pedestrian basis. And none of these studies have ever been disproven. They've been published in peer reviewed journals. Uh, this one shows uh, quality of life index. You can see it shoots up. It was going down before, and it shoots up as soon as the uh, meditators began their program. Nice. Reduced international conflict. Iowa, the Hague, Holland, and 
Washington, DC. Nice. Simultaneous increase in major stock market indices. Now, I don't necessarily consider all stock market increases to be a good thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is a, a indication of the improvement of overall optimism. Right. In society. Right. And people nice. only get optimistic if they feel good and they feel harmonious. <laughs> so that three week taste of utopia assembly, that's really nice. You can see the downs mm. aren't even there and then more ups. Reduced violent crime in Washington, DC. Right. Invincibility to every nation. Uh, so Maharishi made offers to the heads of state of all the countries in the world saying, you can now be the hero. You can turn your country around. You can stop the rise of crime. You can bring crime down. You can bring war down. You can improve the economy. Here's the formula. Just nice. put a small portion of your budget aside to create a group and support them, you know, mm -hmm. so that they can, I mean, because they're human beings, they need food, clothing, and shelter. Right. Uh, but they will meditate pretty much full time. You'll see the improvements in your countries. Very few countries accepted the invitation. One of them was Zimbabwe. Wow. <clears throat> uh, one was uh, Mozambique, and one was um, another African country. I'm trying to remember the name that implemented in their prison system. And they, they were so successful that their prisons had to, half of them had to close because they had so little crime. That's awesome. And prisons yeah. are really part of that old corrupt system anyway. So that's mm -hmm. great. And I hear Mozambique is an amazing place. It's very uplifting. Yes. And um, not only did the president implement it, but he also began speaking to his nation about the age of enlightenment. Right. And it's exciting about um, Zimbabwe, because that's where the Zim come from that are part of potentially the financial reset. So they, they um, adopt it on a smaller scale. But yes, uh -huh. nice. there's been a lot of <laughs> competition between the forces of dark and light there. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so this is a view of Marin County, California, um, just across the bay from San Francisco, where I moved in 1980. I had been visiting there and felt a kind of uh, uh, felt felt sort of at home there. Um, so I finally established a base there in Sausalito in a houseboat. In oh, how fun. And that's a view from Angel Island um, oh, in the middle of the bay. Great picture. Beautiful. Very, very cool. <laughs> that's the, uh, what they call the badge, uh, which is what um, people receive when they've gone through the courses. Nice. The uh, Marishi Consciousness Age of Enlightenment TM City program. Here's my driver's license. Here's my Maharishi consciousness license. <laughs> I love it. Well, the reason for those was uh, because they had thousands of people and uh, uh -huh. it was for going into the domes, you know. And knowing who was trained. Right, exactly. That's a great picture. That picture, you look like you're partially in this dimension and partially in another dimension. Very true. Very true. Yes. My friends used to joke about me that Oh, I see your feet are down to only three inches off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we use, I've worked with um, somebody who does what we call Jedi skills, but it's moving fire, wind, water. And um, a lot of times when we're working with him, we'll take pictures and um, part of parts of the body are transparent. So that Part, being partially in one dimension and moving at a different frequency. It's really neat. I love it when it shows up in pictures. <laughs> yes. And then I moved to Hawaii, lived in Kauai for about a year. That's so a great picture. Some of the, and then I started growing my hair back out. Uh huh. This is a later picture, but it kind of fits because in 1987, I started writing the first version of the Cosmic Renaissance book. And at that time, I had a rather long title, mm -hmm. The Dawn of the Enlightened World Arts Metamorphosis. Wow. And uh, but more time went by, I started realizing uh, it needs a shorter title. So right. uh, and I just could never finish it because I was so busy with uh, projects. And mm -hmm. so it is still about, well, maybe 90 percent finish. I'm looking forward to it coming out very soon. Can't wait. How exciting. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, it's now called Cosmic Renaissance, subtitled Enlightenment and the Arts. Nice. Very nice. In 1985, I uh, became a sannyasin with Osho. Nice. And he 
contributed a lot of intelligence and wisdom. Beautiful to picture. World. This is uh, the Puget Sound area, Mount Rainier, Washington. Wow, gorgeous. So I um, moved there, 1984. Uh, that's Bellevue across the lake from Seattle, mm. where I lived for about nine years. And that's a photo meditating out near the mountain. Wow. I used to consider the mountain to be my one of my temples, you know, mm -hmm. place to go. Yeah. yeah. And I really see those kind of mountains as being like portals. They're energetic transmission mm -hmm. areas for sure. That's where my parents were living. And so it was one of the reasons to come to that area. Nice. Great picture. This is a later photo, but it's in the same location. Um, on a boat uh, playing some music. Nice, very cool. Then in 87, I also met Her Holiness Sri Mata Amrita Nandamai. Some of your audience may be familiar with her. She goes on tour around uh -huh. the world. For short, they call her Amaji. Yeah. I have a lot of friends who've um, been with her, you know, and at various gatherings, yeah. I was very lucky to meet her on her very first tour uh, at a private home nice. with only about 25 people nice and she started showing her omniscience immediately she she could see right through me and knew things about my life and mm. started saying incredible things to me I'm, I'm like how do you know these things and wow she, i'm just a crazy girl because i'm just getting is. chills again you know so she's <laughs> yeah beautiful yeah she's an avatar she's born god realized and mm -hmm. uh, you know, blessing this planet and yeah. showing the joy and the music and the love and the, you know, devotion and service to society and uh, volunteers and the, the free economy, you know, she's, she's showing, demonstrating all of that. Beautiful. So we look forward since the so-called hoax pandemic, uh, she has been staying home in India because right. her devotees are, have a hard time traveling, you know, Right. but hopefully it will uh, <laughs> be open back up. Yeah. Holy mothers will resume. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's her with, she does uh, two or three times a week, this uh, mood, it's called a bhava, a mood. Wow, gorgeous. Uh, uh, puts on a, a demonstration of a kind of a sim symbol of God. Is she doing these on Zoom right now? Yes. Oh, you'll have to send me yes. a link. Well, online, right. Uh-huh, right. Yeah. Ama.org, A-M-M-A dot org. Is okay, great. great. Beautiful. I'm just getting like chills going through me. Just yeah, anyone who hasn't met her should, you yeah. know, or at least meet her online if you can. Because I have, uh, I have a friend who used to do the, all the food at her events in uh, mm. Ann Arbor. She did that for years and she'd always tell me about them. But, well, I went to see her just about every year since, wow. since 1987. Nice. Very yeah. cool. And uh, she... She knows more about you than you know about yourself. Well, right? and you know, I worked with Tony Robbins for years and we firewalked and broke boards with our bare hands wow. and did a lot of, um, you know, training on a lot of levels. But what the purpose of the NLP training was, is that when we are in the presence of someone who has accessed certain parts of their brain, like when we have these people who are living masters by being in their presence, we learn, we actually absorb from them how to yes. access that part of our brain. That's why we go sit at the feet of masters. And it's why we talk to someone like you. It's why we talk to someone who's achieved a level of mastery. We wanna be with you. We wanna hear how you think about your life. What has your journey been like? So it begins opening up those aspects of our brain, our psyche, our consciousness, our ability. And so with um, her beautiful, presence here the same thing you know it's like i can just feel her coming through to me and um and I, I think we need to be aware this is it's not commonly taught in our culture but that by being in the presence of some level of mastery mastery of consciousness mastery of life we access that better for ourselves you hit the nail on the head that's exactly uh, the truth, and it's why I went and have been going and yes. continue to associate. There's an yes. ancient Vedic saying that says, those who desire enlightenment should associate with those who are enlightened. I mean, mm. it's a simple concept. Beautiful. Absolutely. And, it, yeah. and there's a science to it. There is a science to it, and it's a reality. I mean, yes. some of my most powerful spiritual experiences have been just sitting in the presence of masters like this. Yes. You know? 
this uh, beautiful view of Mount Rainier again. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, you may have heard of John Muir. Oh, uh, yes, one of my heroes. Traveled America in the 1800s and mm -hmm. set aside a lot of lands for national parks. Yes. And he said Mount Rainier's meadows of flowers are among the most luxurious he had ever seen anywhere. Mm. So you have to go in the summer, like June or something, and, and when they're in bloom. I was performing a lot of, uh, you know, just on the side, not professionally, but just a lot of little concerts and meetings. And actually, Amici asked me to play for her. So I played sitar. Nice. Some of Amici's gatherings in the late 80s, early Beautiful. 90s. Beautiful. And a lot of other uh, get togethers. Now I'm going to 1990. That's when I got involved in the untax movement. And you have here a statement. Did you just, could you repeat that in the untaxed, untaxed movement? Right. The understanding that the American income tax and pretty much income tax of any country in the world is fraudulent. Yes. It is in violation of the constitution. It Beautiful. is voluntary. We are not required to pay it. And in fact, if you understand your status properly, you know that you have no obligation to file or to pay. That's so beautiful. that I began learning at that time. And the good people in the audience who don't know this, but who have good intentions and believe, well, I should pay my fair share. I'm willing to pay my fair share to help build hospitals and roads and schools and, you know. And pay for military to blow up the world. Well, that too, you know. Right. Um, but to understand, as Reagan himself confirmed while in office, that 100% of what is collected is absorbed solely by interest on the federal debt and by federal transfer payments. In other wow. words, all individual income tax revenues are gone before one nickel is spent on the services taxpayers expect from government. That is amazing. And so I have not filed or paid since then, and I uh, share information on the website uh with people under the legal help section uh of how to use a 100 percent successful method authorized by congress to become officially exempt individually beautiful we have had zero problems with it this is the cover of behold a pale horse it's a book by william cooper who exposed a lot of the cabal's uh shenanigans mm. back in the 80s and uh, I got a hold of it in the early 90s because chapter 18 of it is all about Jonathan May and I became personally acquainted with Jonathan May. He was an ex-billionaire from England who had a net worth of about 80 billion before it was all stolen from him mm. because he was naive enough to think that he could start an alternate money system based on gold and silver. Mm. Those who were watching the markets in 1980 may remember there was a huge spike in the price of silver and gold. The reason was that Jonathan May was working with Governor Connolly of Texas and the billionaire Hunt brothers to buy up silver to make a backing for a new monetary system. Wow he was naive enough to think that he was protected by the constitution <laughs> mm, right i mean same thing kennedy and lincoln mm -hmm. did right so they, he's lucky not to have been murdered but they took him down they took his wealth they imprisoned him wow and i met him in 93 after he got out of prison but he taught me all about sovereign trusts mm. so that was uh his body of knowledge bless his heart to um, my education, I was studying common law trusts and sovereign trusts and that whole field uh, there in the early 90s. And that is when I connect, first started connecting with Randall Hilner, who is head of our Brilliance and Commerce Trust Department today. Right. And he's awesome. He's Very awesome. Knowledgeable. He began yeah. studying it in the 70s and 80s, and he was connected with some of the greatest mentors. Yeah because it isn't taught in any university. Right. It's something the elite have kept a secret. Uh, right. And they don't disclose it to law schools, but it is very much in force. It's very mm -hmm. much in power and it is very much effective nonetheless. I just have like waves going through me as you speak this, you know, and I'm so grateful for each one of us has a piece of the puzzle, you know, solving this puzzle that we're living in. And I'm so grateful that you and Randall have done this work 
and have gained the knowledge and then put it into a form that you can share it. I mean, it's just really, really awesome. You are most welcome. It's the least you deserve. And thanks go to you <laughs> as well for helping to spread the word and to radiate the things for which you are uniquely qualified to Thank help you. society. And it's the reason we're doing these videos and getting information out so people can be 21st century superhumans. <laughs> it takes all of us working together to create that, yes. Yes. I also was introduced in 1992 to the Bank Instruments private placement platforms. I met this guy who said, what are you fooling around with small money for? You know, you can start uh, introducing billionaires to hundred million dollar minimum um, entry investments with zero risk. Right. And you can start receiving a finder's fee of a percentage of their profits every month. And so I began getting mentored in that. I started nice. introducing investors and uh, I would get trained on three-way calls. I would introduce an investor to the mentor. Uh, the investor would ask his questions, the mentor would answer, and I would listen and take notes. Nice. Free Enterprise Forum was a, a wonderful discovery in 92 as well. They were a group getting together at conferences in Southern California with people attending from all over the world who wanted to take an idea and create an income around it. It was a lot of fun because they call it a wow. Imagine you have a passion, something you're intensely interested in, you really love, but it's not making you any money. Right. You know? <laughs> uh, a lot of people have hobbies. They have things they love to do, interests, you know, Right. and they have no source of income from it. Matter of fact, it's often costing them. <laughs> right. Let's say you love skiing. Mm -hmm. You like to snow ski. Okay. But it's costing you money. You have to go to the ski resort. You have to buy equipment. You have to buy the tickets, you, you know, travel. Right. Well, supposing that's your passion, mm -hmm. the Free Enterprise Forum would teach people how to convert that into an income source. Mm. You can do that by writing a book on skiing or create a video on skiing or right. a, a ski resort or invest in a ski resort or uh, create some new product that contributes to skiing or something, you know. Right. And they would brainstorm around this until the idea strikes and you go, wow, that's it. You know, and mm -hmm. they call that a wow, you know. So by the end of the week, you have actually begun forming uh, that enterprise, whatever it is. Right. Better Roll Technology. Dennis Lee had about 10, 20, 30 different inventions and many more on the way for free electricity, free heat, free garbage disposal, um, zero point energy, uh, uh, ways to heat your home or to power your home or power your car or whatever using unlimited universal free energy. Right. And he had proven it over and over and over again, but they kept arresting him on no charges. Right. They would arrest him, put him <sighs> in jail. They wouldn't charge him for anything. <laughs> the petroleum giants, the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would coerce, you know, local police. And then the police were like, well, what, what do we charge him with? And they're like, they wouldn't answer. And so uh -huh. they let him out, you know. He, he couldn't get anything done. You know? Uh-huh. <laughs> Too bad. But he had these inventions and I studied right. that field and I learned that he wasn't the only one. Yes. Uh, there have been 50, 100, 200 major inventors, starting with Tesla mm -hmm. back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. early 1900s. Right. Who were dispossessed of their inventions. They were stolen. They were, right. <laughs> we've had solutions for the, the entire world to live in wealth and opulence and abundance and clean, clean yes. uh, cities, clean industry. For, for decades, right. uh, at least 100 years. Back in 1920, Tesla dis demonstrated a car uh, to the bankers in New York. He plugged his black box into the dashboard, turned the car on, drove around New York City all day long, uh -huh. with people in the car with him, came back, turned it off, turned it back on, kept running. Right. What do you think they did with it? Buried it. Buried it, put it on the shelf, used right. it for themselves, you know. Focus on your development of consciousness. That's the main thing. Yes. And then everything else follows. Yes. I the freedom agree. technology. I have seen people have some of the best freedom technology. They still couldn't manifest their freedom because they kept, still kept getting in trouble because their consciousness was not developed enough. Right. So we don't even want to be in combativeness with the old. We just want to be, be in love, be in clarity. And There's an old saying, why fight the darkness? Just bring the light. You that's know? very good. Very, very good.
I also got involved in 93 in the prosperity programs. Mm. Uh, many of you may be familiar with uh, what was circulating in the 90s, which was the opportunity to put a small amount of money into a legal fund that was supposed to retrieve lost trillions of dollars from ancient or even uh, more modern uh, world wars, you know, and other right. uh, cabal heists. And it was uh, supposed to repatriate that money to us. And of course, it's been a very long story of power struggles that still haven't paid out to this day. Right. But at least I got initiated into uh, <laughs> the, the mailing list, you might say. Yeah, information about it. and the possibility of the changes happening. Beautiful pictures of St. Germain, who I believe is an energy that does watch over the assets for humanity. Yes. So St. Germain, I learned, was uh, the ascended master who has been uh, assigned, as it were, the mm -hmm. oversight of this new development, especially in America, mm. uh, and has what's yes. called the St. Germain World Trust. Mm -hmm and has been overseeing Else. waiting for the karma of mankind to rise up to the level where we have uh, matured enough to handle the power that is going to be unleashed beautifully said the ascended masters are and this 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 kind of answers the question about evil as well yes why is evil being allowed to such an extreme yes it's because we are in training to become co-creators of the universe yes and if we don't understand evil and destructiveness and suffering uh, and deprivation and all the other violations of the universal law, how can we become effective co-creators? Right. We have to understand it. We have to clearly comprehend it. We have to move beyond it and we have to master it so that it doesn't master us. That is great. So it's a hard school, but it's a good school. And it's one graduating from which one is then qualified to rise into one's mastership. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, anyone who's not familiar with this master should uh, look him up and do some research because he's a real being who yes. has been embodied um, for at least a few hundred years, uh, yes. and, but keeps himself hidden from the public for good reasons, And uh, but has been over, over lighting and overseeing a lot of the changes and developments. Mm. And uh, I, I believe the Ascended Masters, or you might call the Great White Brotherhood, has been supporting the delays that we are not pleased with we are it the delays in the coming of the golden age are not popular <laughs> right but the delays have been due to the divine monitoring the collective consciousness yes that it must reach a certain point yes there has to be a readiness to handle readiness there's going to be a lot to handle as these shifts take place that we are mature enough to inherit our kingdom, you might yeah. say, our treasury, you know, mm -hmm. our divine and destiny. Responsibly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. In 94, I moved to Phoenix and began working with Terra Libra, which was founded by Frederick Mann. Hmm. We're kind of teaching a sort of, uh, you might say, libertarian philosophy without being political. Nice. Uh, a kind of um, philosophy through books and uh, reports of uh, the wisdom of minimum government, maximum liberty and freedom. So terra libra means liberty of the earth, um, uh, a free society, what it would Beautiful. take. It was a very, very good part of my training. And that's where I focused a lot on learning what sovereignty means, individual sovereignty, and how no less than six US Supreme Court cases affirmed that Americans are sovereigns without subjects. Mm. The first being 1792, uh, Holm versus Chisholm, I think, is, is the case. It's in my book. Um, so these cases were uh, affirming the release of the old idea of sovereignty that came from Europe which was a definite monarch at the top and all his subjects underneath or her subjects. Hmm. And so America was founded on a new idea that we are all kings and queens. Nice, beautiful. So yes. if you're all kings and queens, how do we get along? How do we right. manage society? Mm -hmm. And that's what the constitution was not a constitution for the people. It was between 
the states and the feds to limit the government. Right. And it didn't give us rights. We had them already. It just affirmed them. That's right. I began speaking in 96 at Investors International Seminars. This was created by Dr. Rudolf Van Lynn, who was originally from Holland mm -hmm. and was a wealthy investor who had himself developed quite a disdain for government and for uh, tyranny mm. and was giving scathing speeches <laughs> himself right. about the evils and the corruption and the uh, and he went really over the top. I think they mm. finally uh, arrested him too because of this. Because he had quite a scathing tongue. I, I didn't, mm. when I spoke at the conferences, I wasn't quite so anti government. I was more pro freedom. Yeah, let's read this. I love what it says. It says Tonson Fairmont, author and philosopher, his eloquent speech provokes a standing ovation. And then this is our recent seminars on ocean cruises and in tax havens drew people from all over North America below some of our guests and guest lectures. And I remember during that era listening to um, several different speakers who were from these sort of get togethers and being in a few of the tax havens. So um, there's a great movement, really. Mm -hmm. The other speakers were talking about how to reduce your taxes, mm -hmm. how to set up offshore tax shelters or be free completely on the individual level. Uh, they had speakers on how to increase your investment yields, uh, how to set up asset protection structures. Right. I was the one they brought in with a kind of philosophy, freedom philosophy. Nice. So it Beautiful. kind of made a perfect uh, combination. Beautiful. We covered asset protection, freedom from income tax, individual sovereignty, government exposés, patriot campaigns, high yield investments, the UCC, the banking cabal, commercial remedies, mortgage fraud, debt elimination, prosperity programs, the global currency reset, and more. That was an exciting time. Yes. And it was a time of a lot of travel. It was during that time as well that I moved to Santa Barbara. Mm late 96, early 97. There's a beautiful aerial photo. That is gorgeous. Santa Barbara with the ocean there to the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, made that my base. But nice. these, there's a world map showing some of the places we went with the seminars. Alaska Inside Passage Cruise. Nice. Mexican How fun. Coast Cruise down to Mazatlan. Right. Uh, Cabo San Lucas, Puerto Vallarta. Beautiful. And over in uh, the Caribbean, Bermuda, Bahamas, Aruba, and uh, cruises to Bahamas. And then in the Eastern Hemisphere, Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, mm -hmm. Malaysia. Nice. Bali, Fiji, uh, and a tour of Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, all over the world. Well, not all over, but quite, quite a few places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> places, exotic places, yes. beautiful places, tax yes. havens. Uh, for example, Vanuatu, and I neglected to put that on the map, but Vanuatu was uh, one of them in the South Pacific, mm -hmm. which is a tax haven and a favorites of Australians. Nice. And people started saying, well, do you have a book? And I didn't at first. So in 97, I had to come out with <laughs> my, my book, Sovereignty Consciousness. Great. And that was the, of the, of the talks. Now, where's uh, that available, Thompson? With apologies, it is only available online and it can be emailed. I haven't even posted it on a website because okay. I am incorporating many parts of it in the new book, Cosmic right. Renaissance. That would make sense. So, um, you know, one of the things I'd like to toss out here that I'm really struck by is one of the sayings that's gone around, uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so um, is that once you have 10,000 hours invested in something, you have a level of mastery at it. And, I, and I'm sure you have far more than 10,000 hours. I mean, that's kind of like doing it full time for 10 years. Um, but honestly, really, I mean, we're looking at a lifetime of the consciousness path of studying these things, studying freedom, studying being present, studying how to live as a sovereign being. And then all of the things that have to do with banking and sovereign law. And I just love it. I think um, it's, this is really reviewing this history of yours helps us to see the depth to which you, your knowledge comes from. Didn't just fall off the map yesterday, right? 
Thank you. Well, you and I and many others are here for the transition into a, yes. a new age, a golden age, a, a new time yes. in history, which is more positive, more life supporting, more free. And so it all comes down to freedom because that's yes. the highest value. And we've dedicated, I mean, I've dedicated my lifetime. As, it's a path of dedication and mastery, yes. not just a job or something like that. That's right. That's what we call Dharma. It's, yes. it's one's Beautiful. life calling. Beautiful. Yeah, it was 98. I took the Art of Living course with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar mm. in Santa Barbara and then took his advanced retreat in uh, Lake Tahoe and uh, had the breakthrough of the breathing practice, which is mm. one of his 40 or 50 methods that he teaches. Sudarshan Kriya, highly recommended. Mm. If anyone has taken the course, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, highly recommended. It's a three-day course. You learn a breathing practice, among other things, called Sudarshan Kriya. And Beautiful. to me, it was his uh, epitome. <laughs> nice. Because it's a way of deep breathing in a certain rhythm that he guides you through um, on a recording that takes the whole body into ecstasy within about 15 minutes. Gorgeous. Maybe we can Very put a link to something like that under the in the description of the video. Okay, so yeah. Artofliving.org. And he's world famous and has had tens yes. of millions of people benefit from his programs. And they just go on and on and on. All kinds of humanitarian projects and everything. Nice. It's a, a very great enlightened master there. Quickly review a few of the involvements that I had during those years with trusts, with organizations, with all kinds of uh, companies, areas of knowledge experience, expertise. Moving forward to 2010, I was uh, very fortunate to go through a course called uh, Diksha Giver Training mm. or Oneness Blessing Training. Yes, Oneness University. Oneness University is pictured there. Uh, that's Sri Bhagavan who mm -hmm. was born enlightened. So that's an avatar. Someone yes, I have him. more chills going through me and I have friends who are very involved with him. In fact, Tony Robbins is involved with him. These Tony days. Robbins was involved with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he teaches Bacabon. the function of the brain, that there are three brains, the reptilian brain, the social brain, and the prefrontal cortex. And he observed that from a young age, from five, six, seven, he was wondering why is there a difference in his own state from other people? Mm, and beautiful. he was that it had to do with the brain function. Mm, I have such chills. The Diksha, which is a placement of the hands on someone's head for about three minutes, right. transfers an influence of oneness ah. to that person. Right. And most of the people who've experienced it have felt peace, bliss, happiness, joy, mm -hmm. uh, a nice feeling, and they may or may not understand it. But what's happening is that the seat of attention of consciousness is moving from those more primitive brains into the prefrontal cortex, mm. which is part of the brain that perceives oneness. Oh, I love that. That's fabulous. And when you see oneness, you can't harm anyone. You can't do anything wrong because right. that's myself out there. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever I've done to them, I've done to myself. Fabulous. Yes. That's a great description of that better than I've heard. So thank you for that. There's another certificate for you. <laughs> <laughs> And so those who go through Deesha training or Oneness Blessing training get uh, a certificate like this. Beautiful. And around uh, 2013, uh, Brilliance and Commerce was born. Nice. So finally, fast forwarding to the time when I could start uh, consolidating all of these different forms of knowledge into yes. something that is immediately useful for people. Okay, people have families, they have jobs, they have demands on their time they may not have had the time to go through all the studies that you and i have right and uh but they're suffering from excessive debt yes or from taxes yes or from drains on their wealth their, their prosperity challenges right. financially i picked out a couple of the gems of the things that i had learned along the way and uh, began offering them and this was formed this brilliance and commerce little company with debt elimination and the natural law trust fabulous and they are fabulous and they and i work with you on those and i'm 
really honor the work that you guys have done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll go into that now. I began speaking a lot on radio shows and conferences and wonderful uh, gatherings like this one during those years, 2013, 14, 15, 16. Haven't done so much lately. Actually, yours, uh, Carrie, is uh, a, a nice return to that. Um, nice. Because I've been more involved in the last couple of years with the Bank Instruments programs, but uh, it's nice right. to, to speak again on all this. Great. So this is um, important to distinguish between the United States and the rest of the world. Unfortunately, we have not developed a debt elimination system for other countries. Mm. And we have made it available to anyone from any country to convert the laws in it to the laws of their own country. So Canadians, many of them have asked, people from England, people from other countries, and we say, fine, you know, take our system, find a lawyer or someone, a paralegal, someone who can find the local laws that are the equivalent of the U.S. laws on which our system is based, convert it to those laws, and then you can have it effective in that country. And somehow, some, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of back and forth, but somehow it hasn't developed in any other country yet, even though the scam is the same. I think there's something about the laws in the United States that are more protective of the citizen. Only than... that there are more consumer protection laws. That's all. okay. You think but that's mainly what it is? Thing. That's only partial. That helps, but it's not. It's not the essence of it. Mm -hmm. The essence of it is global. Uh, it's it's fraud committed by the entire international banking system. Absolutely, it's a global part of the global nightmare yeah. for sure of the old. I mean, the monetary ways. system is global. You know, mm -hmm. local countries may have their own laws, but. Remember what Rothschild said in the 1700s. He says, give me control of That's a right. nation's currency and I care not who makes it a lot. That's right. Yep. And that is really a powerful statement for somebody who's part of the controlling factor. But all countries can be free from taxes practically overnight by the use of the trust. So let's start with the trust. Yes. Uh, we're, we'll get into the uh, debt elimination system in a few minutes. I'm just showing some a preview <laughs> right uh, just to keep everyone aware that those who are mainly interested in that topic will just have to wait a few minutes but right. we'll, get into it. Uh, we'll start with the trust because that's universal that's easy that's something that anyone anywhere can use it doesn't have a confrontational aspect like the debt elimination system does right doesn't confront the banks with fraud it's just quietly setting up an agreement a contract a private contract and moving your commerce into it it's it's that simple Previously, a best kept secret of the super rich, peaceful people are enjoying protected status and state of the art sovereign trusts. We are providing the best guide for that. For generations, a few thousand people worldwide have been quietly successful in what others said is impossible. We intentionally use the word peaceful because it indicates that we are not here to battle anyone or anything. We have been very fortunate in attracting the clients who are also peaceful. Beautiful. Uh, to our knowledge, in five decades, there has not been a single court case Beautiful. involving one of these trusts, challenging it or its legitimacy or anything like that. I can speak to the, the well-being of this process. I really like it. So for any listeners, I uh, probably would not have made it this far in this particular show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if there are any listeners out there who are bent on going to court and battling and fighting the darkness, this trust is probably not for them. Yes. It's for the cultural creatives, those who are into creating conscious wealth, con contributors to the golden age, are quietly transacting sacred commerce through an advanced asset protection instrument, previously a best kept secret of the super rich. And we say it's a bridge to the golden age because guess what? This is one of the only trusts on the planet that has no chance of becoming obsolete. Mm. No matter how much the world may change in coming generations and, or even centuries, the principles on which it is based are timeless. Beautiful. It's the universal right of contract, the, the, the right of anyone to go into a contract with a few other people and not be interfered with 
by any government. So it's a universal right. It's affirmed in US Supreme Court cases like Hale versus Hinkle that say you have the unlimited right to enter into contract without interference from the government as long as you're not harming anyone. Beautiful. Uh, but that's pretty much universal. It's, it's pretty much all countries, you know, you have that basic right. And the golden age is only going to honor that and expand that. Great. And, and when the time comes that there are no more taxes left on the planet, you would still use the trust for the efficient distribution of assets and for efficient es estate planning. Yes. You can pay, bank and pay bills with it. You can enjoy freedom and privacy. It's valid in all countries. It's sovereign, international, effective never been penetrated or invalidated in five decades, which is 100% success. And in fact, it cannot be invalidated. The most that could ever happen theoretically, hypothetically, is that if it were taken into court, the trust itself would not be litigated. What would be litigated, if, if such a case were to arise, would be the specific actions of its officers. Right. And so there would be a specific transaction or a specific action by its officers that could uh, grant limited jurisdiction for that particular uh, incident or event. But the uh, sanctity of the trust itself cannot be uh, argued or litigated. Yeah, has and never been. people who are following along can read what's on your screen because that's a really good piece of information. Tonson, just to break this down into layman's terms, let's just pretend we're all in elementary school when it comes to managing our assets. So I, as just a sovereign woman on planet Earth, could take all of my assets, even if I just have a few hundred dollars in my bank accounts, maybe I own a, um, a house, um, I have kids, but I can take my assets and put them into this trust and I can run my uh, the experiences of my monetary life through the trust. Is that correct? Yes. It's just, just simple. Mm -hmm. You can just start doing things in the name of the trust instead of in your personal name. Right. Very simple. Very that good. way, your assets are much more protected. Um, any judgments or lawsuits or litigation against your personal name. Um, cannot touch the assets that are titled over to the trust. It's an irrevocable trust, irrevocable, meaning it is the strongest form of asset protection. Yes. And you could have an LLC or a business entity also inside the trust, right? Yes. The way that works is you would uh, title a majority of the assets and income of the statutory entity to the trust, you wouldn't want to put 100% of it in because that mm -hmm. would raise eyebrows and you know look suspicious. But let's say you put 90%, 95%, 98% mm -hmm. of the assets and income of an LLC or a corporation into the natural law trust. That way, that percentage of those assets and income are non-taxable, non-reportable. Right. And if you have a statutory entity and you want to keep it, you can keep it, you can keep operating it. It will file its tax returns and it will pay some tax, but uh, the, the trust itself does not pay, does not file and has no obligation to do so. Right, and I also have a humanitarian organization which I'm looking at moving into beneficiary position in my trust. Mm -hmm. You can either make it a beneficiary or you could have it be play another role there are other roles the all of that discussion about the mechanics of how it works would right. uh, someone would get into uh when they read the ebook right uh, which is downloadable from the website and also the uh cons consultation uh once one is a paid client we ha they have one-on-one -on -one consultation with right. our trust writer and i'm just uh, popping these things up because i know there's people out there in our audience who would have these as questions Anyone watching the video is welcome to stop it and read what's on the screen. Um, I just put a lot of information there for reference. Right. Um, one of the unique things about our trust is that you can be the trustee. Um, there are other trusts out there where there's no choice. You know, the organization that sells you the trust appoints a trustee for you. And it's usually either themselves or someone they choose. Um, 
and you just have no choice. In ours, you have a choice. You have three choices. You can either be the trustee as the client, or you can choose a trustee from among your friends, <clears throat> or you can ask us to find one for you. But we encourage most people to be their own trustee, unless they're too young, they're a minor, underage, uh, or have no education, or they're elderly, or they have no interest. They don't want hands-on management. They want someone else to manage it for them. But in most cases, most, most people would like to do their own banking. They'd like to control their own assets, be the one responsible. So we show how to do that, and it's not complicated. Right. Some more details on the screen. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to stop it and read it. And, yes. Um, some of this is in the ebook as well. As you can see, there's a long list of unique features and benefits, and uh, those are important. At the bottom of this screen is the URL, um, assetgeniustrust.com. So for those who have been waiting for a website address, there you go, assetgeniustrust.com. And we'll put that under the video as well. And there's an 80 page ebook that you can download and read. It is for sale on Amazon, but there's no point in paying for it when you can get it directly for free uh, from the site. Would you like to go into the debt elimination information? Yeah. You can outright cancel 100% of your unsecured debt. So I unsecured means it's not a mortgage on a house. It's not a car loan because those have assets that can be taken if you don't pay the debt. Now, the same principles apply. However, um, you might be at risk of losing the asset because of the International Crime Syndicate, <laughs> which has its goons. Yes. And uh, if you apply the debt elimination system to something that has an asset collateral behind it, the international crime gangsters will come and take that asset, even in the violation of law, but they, they get away with it because that's the way the system has been. However, an unsecured debt, such as a line of credit, a visa, a MasterCard, Discover, American Express, or a student loan uh, are what we call unsecured because it's based on your signature. And that's where the consumer protection laws exist and that's where we have success. So the first thing to understand is the difference between good debt and bad debt. And you can read this if you wanna stop the video, but basically um, good debt is where you have been building wealth with it. You've built up good credit you're using the debt for investment in a business or in something that's productive. You've done it voluntarily. You're getting benefit from it. Um, you want to continue to keep that good credit. You don't want to cancel that debt. You want to play the game. And so you play the game and you play it well. Mm. So use the, the, the debt. Usually it's best in business or in uh, enterprises where you have something that's going to pay off the debt easily and quickly with a profit left over. Then bad debt is where you lost your job, uh, you have very little income, you have medical bills, you are in, you, you just can't survive without borrowing, uh, or you've been irresponsible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've just run up all kinds of indulgence, uh, credit card debts, and now you're stuck. You're like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Uh, but in any case, uh, that would be bad in the sense that if you've gotten in over your head and you can't pay it off easily, now you're paying extortionate interest rates. Right. Uh, and, and it's becoming a bondage. You're, you're enslaved by it. I had somebody recently ask about medical debts. Are, do those often fit into this um, category? No, because medical debt is not money. Uh huh. It was services rendered for which there is a bill. Now, there are other um, bodies of knowledge out there. Unfortunately, I've not been able to package it and offer it through Brilliance and Commerce. I wish that we could have. If anyone has that, get in touch with us. Mm -hmm. But it is known, uh, for example, Walter Burian did the research on the CAFRs, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports that shows the two sets of books mm -hmm. that every municipality, county, and state, and the feds keep. Uh, they have billions, trillions of dollars uh, hidden. Uh, publicly, they'll say, oh, we're running out of money. We need to raise taxes and all that. That's the public side of the books. The private side, which Walter Burian and others have proven, 
has vast wealth that has been stolen from the people and is not disclosed and it pays hospital bills, it pays for all kinds of things. Um, when they can't get money from the patient mm -hmm. because the patient ran up a hundred thousand in medical bills and he doesn't right. have the money, right. it's paid by that, those hidden funds. Interesting. So there is knowledge out there that some people have on how to access that to pay a mm -hmm. medical bill. And so we, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just an area we haven't mastered. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. It's a good little tidbit though. Right. Yeah. But the debts that can be canceled, the bad debts are those that were under the Federal Reserve System. Money mm -hmm. lo loaned and put into your account, whether it's a credit card or a line of credit out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Credit card or line of credit out of thin air. And, you know, I mean, many people are desperate with the they're stressed all the time because of the debt load that they're carrying. Yep. And um, so the idea that there's there's a possibility of eliminating that is really exciting. Mm -hmm. So real debt and fake debt, that's the next point because you have to distinguish and understand the difference. We were just talking about medical bills and so forth. Let's say your mother uh, loans money to you. That's a real debt. Right. And it should be repaid your friend loans you money or a business that perhaps you bought a, an appliance from a business and that business uh, gave credit where you could make time payments on that appliance. But the business didn't outsource the debt to a banking institution. It's an in-house debt. Right. That is a legitimate debt. You owe that money to that merchant because he or she, uh, you know, put something out, out of his own, his or her own bank account. Right. To get that appliance to you. And so there is a, an installment payment system. In fact, we have something like that at Brilliance and Commerce. You can buy the trust on installment payments. You know, nice. we don't charge any interest. But for people that don't have $2,500, they can pay $250 a month nice. for 10 months. Right. That's a legitimate debt. It mm -hmm. cannot be canceled because there was no money loaned. Right. It was a product delivered by the merchant. Fake debt is where people think that when Visa puts $10,000 credit on your credit card, that they had a billion dollars and they went, their account went down by 10,000 because they loaned it to you. That's the fallacy. They never loaned anything. They put a few computer keystrokes and it was created out of thin air. That's called the Mandrake mechanism outlined in a book called a creature from Jekyll Island by G. Yes. Edward Griffin. Mm -hmm. We highly recommend everyone read that book. If you haven't already the creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin. And he talks in there among other things about the banking families, the federal reserve, how this system came to be and how the Mandrake mechanism works. So fake debt is where it was loaned out of thin air. They have nothing at stake, nothing at risk. If you don't pay it back, they haven't lost anything, but they pretend that they will be really harmed and they come after you with all their force. So our system stops them from coming after you. Very cool. It challenges them to prove that it was legitimate debt under a list of laws, which they can't do and have never done and never will do. Nice. Yes, stress. Keep the good debt for profit, eliminate the fake enslaving debt. Nice. Student loans have been a big problem. It's one of the biggest uh, uh, plagues on our country. Mm -hmm. uh, billions, trillions of dollars of student loans. Students graduate from college and they owe 40,000, 60, 80, 100,000. Right. Yep. Doctors, dentists, and lawyers have mm -hmm. two, three, and four hundred thousand dollars student loan debts. And they still they begin their careers in debt, in deep debt. And that's exactly how the system was designed. Mm -hmm. Start them out as slaves and keep them as slaves. And you know, there's so many people I know who owe this kind of debt and um, just would never believe that they could actually, it would be okay to cancel it. They can cancel it because it's based on the same hoax, the same mm -hmm. scam, the same funny money out of thin air. And we have a hundred percent success rate because they can't defeat that. They right. have no argument, no rebuttal. Right. 
do it. So Very student good. loans also, we have been equally successful in counseling as well as credit Very card. exciting. Here's a quote from John Maynard Keynes, the economist, by this means, the fractional reserve banking government may secretly and unobserved confiscate the wealth of the people and not one man in a million will detect the theft. Wow, that's a really amazing picture too. And then Rothschild, hello there, my name is Jacob Rothschild. My family is worth $500 trillion. That was probably back 10, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. We own nearly every central bank in the world. We finance both sides of every war since Napoleon. Right. We own your news, the media, your oil, and your government. You've probably never heard of me. That's right. Why this is relevant to debt elimination is because families like that, who we call the cabal, the committee of 300, the 12 right. families, the Bilderbergers, the, you know, the uh, economic forum, all of these people, have been engineering on purpose for generations since at least 100 years ago and more. Yes. Um, a banking system that pays them and deprives everyone else. Yes. And it's called the enslavement of debt. Fortunately, anything that is um, corrupt is fake and false at its basis. So it fake, can, false, and fading. Let's say that. Fading because it can be shown legally uh that it, it's not real right and when you can show it's not real you can be free of it Picture. really you still trust the lenders <laughs> i'll skip over some of the fine print but right. uh, those who to stop the video can read it yeah but here is a very powerful argument for why it should be canceled can and should and is being canceled for those who have used the system right Testimonials, we have a number of those. Mm -hmm. uh, no need to read them all, but you can right. see this. We have them on the website. Just click on the testimonial section. Beautiful. The website. This is important. You will actually benefit the economy by eliminating your fake. Wow, that's a really cool, positive thing to know. Because, I mean, I think I remember just living with shame and guilt and you know, oh, I'm an abomination to society you know, <laughs> um, when I had excessive debt that I didn't know what to do with. And um, uh -huh. it's because beautiful. Because you have a conscience. You're a good yeah. person. You have a conscience. And a right. lot of people are like that. They, and I was they, drinking the Kool-Aid. I was believing the narrative instead uh -huh. of like what you're saying here. You'll actually help the economy by eliminating your fake debt. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. People think, well, I, I owe it. I mean, I should pay it, you know, right. I mean, they're good people. they have a good heart and that's right. true. It's a legitimate debt. You should pay it. And so yep. thank you for, for that vote of confidence. But when you understand that all you're doing is supporting an international crime syndicate, right? Your payments are going directly into the, the coffers of the cabal. It's not going for benefiting society. It's actually strengthening the enslaving mechanism you're actually contributing by making payments on those fake debts. You're actually contributing to crime and to the further enslavement of mankind. Right. So by withdrawing those payments and redirecting them to something life supporting, okay, pay your medical bills, pay, improve, do home improvement, you know, uh, sp uh, support your children, uh, send them to college, uh, Go on an educational retreat or a spiritual yeah, retreat. Have or, a little freedom. Yeah, I have mean, some freedom. My husband says he couldn't even imagine when he had a wife and a child and a house payment to make, how did people actually get to go on vacation? You know, because they had so many bills yep. just to survive. And um, to survive. this is so exciting, Tonson. It really is because and when the burden of debt is lifted, you suddenly oh, you can breathe. You have some freedom. You're like, right. wow, you know. This uh, has supported a parasitic system by mm -hmm. stopping the fame payment on these phony debts. You're withdrawing the your support from the parasites, and people need to unwind the story that they've been told by commerce, by the television, mm -hmm. by the public programming that mm -hmm. is being run as, you know the. I mean, this programming was brought into our country with the Nazis after World War II, and 
the, the programming has been on the television and advertising. And so we've just believed that we're supposed to be performing as little rats on wheels and to like realize wheels, exactly to mm -hmm. begin unraveling this stuff and building a new belief system is so critically important. The good news is you can defeat debts and taxes without fighting. There is no need to fight. There is no need to battle. There's no need to have retaliation. Wow. There's no need to be dragged into any kind of a, a conflict. Yes, you're putting dispute letters out on the debts that challenge the banks. And they will send rebuttal letters, which are nonsense. So that's predictable. But other than that, it's not really a battle. Right. All you do is we, we call it rinse and repeat. You just simply send the dispute letter again. You say thank you for your rebuttal but you didn't answer my points. You didn't show, you didn't ask, you didn't provide what I asked for. Very good. If the debt is legitimate, you should sign this enclosed affidavit guaranteeing that it's a real debt and that you, you that you actually loan me the money and that if I don't pay it back, you'll be harmed. They Very won't sign good. it. They, have never, they never will. Very good. And there are other points in the dispute letter that they have to answer. They have to re rebut and they never do. They beat around the bush. They they said, well, here's all your statements. You signed the original contract. Uh-uh. Well, guess what? A contract is rendered null and void for fraud. I'll get to that in a moment here. That's one of the uh, <laughs> one of the court cases we base our system on. Nice. Invincible evidence. We've even been beating them in court. Very nice. few people have to go to court. But sometimes the debt has reached the 90% level it's reached the 11th hour by the time they come to us you know right so they start sending our dispute letters but then they get sued to uh, pay the debt so then we have a legal team to help them beat the court case and nice. uh, we have pretty close not maybe 100 but very close to 100 percent success even in court but nice. very few like i said maybe one or two percent of our people have to go to court just a warning that uh, don't listen to lawyers, don't take this to your typical right. attorney and say, well, what do you think of this? Because they're ignorant. Right. They haven't been trained in this. Absolutely. Attorneys themselves need to learn from us. Right. Okay. More and more discussion about the attorneys. Don't be influenced by their ignorance. Same goes for accountants. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we mean by the 100% success rate? That's on the website and you can stop this video if you wish and read yes. that perfect i'm going to uh, breeze through there's a lot of uh, evidences here we have examples right yeah student loan victory so, these, these are evidences these are statements from people nice. showing the, the cancellation of their debt yeah and people can stop and read these very good mm -hmm. More testimonials. Nice. Proof from the IRS. See right there where the arrow is? It says cancellation nice. of debt. Nice. I mean, how much more proof do you need? The IRS right. itself. And then they tried to charge the person with income tax because of the debt cancellation. <laughs> how funny. And of course, there are solutions to that too. <clears throat> Here it is. Fraud vitiates the most solemn contracts, documents, and even judgments. Mm. U.S. <clears throat> versus Throckmorton. So that has never been overturned. Nice. If the people only understood the rank and justice of the banking system, there would be a revolution by tomorrow. So. U.S. President Andrew Jackson, 1834. Yes. They pretend a lender sued the credit card debt holder or the student loan debt holder, and they consulted our legal team. We helped them win, and the case was dismissed. Nice. <clears throat> Judgments have been canceled. 
student loan victories. Nice. More testimonials. Videos. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you go to the website, you'll see a number of videos about the monetary system. Um, if you're new to this information, watch those videos. They will educate you. And I think you will feel a thrill of excitement and perhaps even ecstasy. Inexpensive, $450. Quick and easy. It's important for people to understand it's a do-it-yourself system. If we were to provide it as a service, they'd probably shut us down by tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. So you, I think you'd like us to stay in business. And the way we do that is we just provide you the information and then you implement it yourself, but we're here to hold your hand through the process. Nice. We provide all the instructions and we provide customer service in the, in the form of just answering questions along the way. If you don't believe it, see our victory letters and victory statements under proof that that elimination works on the website. If you don't understand it, read the free ebook. And for those who prefer to listen to audios while driving or relaxing, you can click on the videos on the website, even while in the car and just listen to the audio. Yes, very nice. So here's the, the website is flydebtfree.com. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that uh, phrase, flydebtfree.com. Yes. F-L-Y-D-E-B-T f-r-e-e -E, com, and it'll be under the video as well yes so i'm going to conclude just with a few spiritual things beautiful um global currency reset is being overseen by not just saint germain but a number of masters uh, both on earth and off world it's due to the fact that when wars happened the invading forces such as in Iraq or Vietnam or other places went in and reduced, for example, the Iraqi dinar, which was worth about $3.50, $4, and reduce it down to like 15 cents, 12 cents, mm. you know, so they cut the country's financial system. This is an overview of the 52,000 year cycle. As you can see where it says, we are here, we are at epical dawn. And epochs go in about 12,000 year cycles. A little oh, I over. see it right in the middle of the page. We are here, two different mm -hmm. places, yeah. 12, it's actually a little over 12,000. It's uh, what we rounded off, rounded I, off to- It's funny, I show something just like this in my workshops, very cool. Mm-hmm, mm. so. It just gives you the context in which these world changes are taking place. Yes, absolutely. Is that there is a frequency, a vibration of the entire solar system that rises and falls. And when the frequency goes way down, such as an epical midnight, you have the, the flood. Um, in the Bible, it's known as the Noah's flood, but actually it was a flood in many, many areas of the earth, the Atlant the sinking mm -hmm. of Atlantis. Um, you had catastrophes, you had things like that. Yes. There was a very brief golden age after that. And then uh, a movement in frequency up to where we are now. Right. And we are at the pre-dawn period or, or the epical dawn. Yes, we are. Beautiful. Scale of the evolution of consciousness. Uh, thanks to Dr. David Hawkins for contributing this, who actually created a zero to a thousand love, a series of levels where below 200, you're lacking integrity. And 200 begins integrity, and there's the reptilian brain, social brain, and prefrontal cortex shown in that I added. I added those things in with a Hawkins scale to show where they apply. Nice. Very good. Yeah, and enlightenment begins at 700 and goes up from nice. there. And you're talking about that prefrontal cortex that gets activated with the oneness program where we're beginning to use higher brain function instead of the lower survival brain functions. Mm -hmm. and this good. is 
facilitated by being loving. Yes. By breathing, that, breathing and smiling. Breathing and smiling, being positive, being loving, uh, practicing forgiveness, practicing compassion. Yes. Um, practicing gratitude. Yes. This itself could be a whole show, the mandala of the curve of developing consciousness. Right. Just real quickly, you see in the center there, the origin going to the lower left of consciousness starting out as a star seed, mm -hmm. where each soul came out of the great central sun yes. of pure being out of Godhead as a spark of consciousness, a, a sort of baby godling. Mm -hmm. And then going into the cycles of time and right. down through the dimensions of existence. Mm -hmm. And when it reaches the top of this diagram, that is where the soul has completely landed in 3D density, third mm -hmm. density, and is now rather asleep, has a kind of amnesia. You see how it has no line connecting it to the center anymore. That means that the perception has temporarily uh, gone to sleep about one's origin, where one came from, and one's awareness of source. In the third quadrant, over in the upper right, one begins deepening one's awareness and begins cognizing source again. Mm, nice. And in the fourth quadrant, in the lower right, between three and four, you see that that soul is now regularly becoming established in full awareness nice. while maintaining a ground, a grounding, a feet on the ground awareness of uh, the surface of things, the periphery. Right. At the same time, one's awareness is expanding back into source. So Very one's nice. feet are on the ground and one's head is in the sky. Nice diagram, like it. And at that final point, that's what we call awakening, self-realization, enlightenment. Beautiful. Two phases of world history, innocence and ignorance in the phase one, heaven provided by the environment, life in the heart. This is like the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. The soul has yet to learn. Oneness is felt but not understood. Mm -hmm. In the second phase, one came out of the the garden and lost paradise is now moving from the heart into the head. So now there's no longer the tree of life, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. So there's knowledge being gained, but there's guilt also because now one is experimenting with violation of natural law. Mm -hmm. Experience of opposites. So you have pain and pleasure, happiness and sorrow, right and wrong, black and white, all the opposites, war and peace life in the mind, the soul is learning, and oneness seems to be lost. The third column there is not really a phase because it's really the beginning of eternal life mm -hmm. in sovereignty consciousness. Innocence is regained and it's combined with knowledge. Beautiful. Heaven is generated from within. Life is lived in the source. Nice. The soul has learned. Beautiful. And oneness is established eternally. Beautiful. So that's the goal. That's where saints and masters have arrived. That's where mankind collectively is headed. Yes. Beautiful. That's, by yes. the way, where my movies will be based. My mm. Cosmic Renaissance movies will be in that uh, third, endless, timeless we category. Are ready. Global Economic Security and Reformation Act, GASARA. Um, these are global things unfolding to reflect that rise in consciousness collectively. Yes. These are prophecies from Maharishi, Sri Bhagavan, the Shambhala prophecy of Buddha, mm. dawn of the sixth sun and the Aztec calendar, pillar of celestial fire, Robert Cox, mm. George Washington's vision, the end of the sinister force predicted by St. Germain, 
beginning of the new 52,000 year cycle as shown by Robert Cox in his book, mm -hmm. beginning of the 206 million year cycle as spoken of by Ascended Master Kuthumi, mm -hmm. the solar flash talked about by David Wilcock, mm -hmm. after the great purification uh, spoken of by the Hopi prophecies, and also by Mahavatar Babaji, mm. Peter Konstantinov Dinov's, Dinov's prophecy of the cosmic electricity, mm. 21st century superhuman, spoken of by Seer Carrie Ellis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, sometime, maybe we can go more into my own experience in 1976, where I was given a time travel visit into mm. the established golden age on earth oh i'd love to do that yes we'll do that one of these days excellent this is just a quick uh slide of george washington's vision it's mm. a painting done to illustrate what he saw an angel showed him the future Gorgeous. of the united states oh, wow. in which the united states was uh increasing in both good and bad at the same time mm. Good things developing, bad things developing, everything increasing until there's a dark cloud over the country, which was then dispersed by a blinding white light mm. that then issued in a new age. I love it. Beautiful. Chills. Quantum financial system is the new system based in quantum consciousness. It's not just yes. a computer yes. or a computer system. It is actually derived from uh, the unified field quantum field so that is actually rolling out right now it's actually already here it's just that uh, the people working on it are trying to remove some of the last uh, dark forces that are blocking it right i'm with you on this one and that's it that's uh, these last few slides these are examples of people's conceptions of heaven on earth yes uh, these are, are just magnificent images showing, uh, mm. and there are thousands of them out there. Yeah, I have many of these kind of visions every day. Yeah, it just shows that there are many, many people, probably millions. Yes. Maybe, maybe a billion or two. Whose consciousness are moving in this direction, who are mm. ready, who are already embodying, holding this new presence uh, in the earth realms. They're showing in their paintings an idea of perfection. Yes. An idea of peace on earth, prosperity. Yes. Harmony. Which plenty. is all I think most people really want. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all most people would choose given the choice. And we have a choice. This planet is magnificent. Yes. And if it isn't spoiled, if we live in harmony with its laws and with universal law. Yes. And we are spiritually awake. Uh, we have prosperity, we have wellness, we don't have any sickness, there's no more poverty, no more uh, uh, illness, no more war, no more crime. Right. <clears throat> those it's things, all manufactured. Those things no longer get manufactured and no longer oppress one. And, right. and then living in tune with the earth and with natural law and with one's own mm. uh, divine self within. Yes outward manifestation becomes perfect yes beautiful beautiful and there are an infinite number of different versions of it it doesn't just come in one style i love it, it. there are many different styles many different forms delicious forms that it can take yes mm. they say a picture is worth a thousand words and that's why <laughs> It I'm, really is. I'm uh, very much, um, as soon as a sufficient financial base is built, <clears throat> moving into uh, video making, probably holography. Yes. <clears throat> media, you know, because the media needs purification. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it needs, it needs uh, globally and, and yes. it needs uh, infusion yes. with heavenly frequencies. That's one of my missions also, yes without being sectarian, you know, yes. without promoting just some one ideology, but opening up the global awareness to every kind of higher uh, realization. Yes, absolutely. Tonson, this has been brilliant, really gorgeous 
you're very calm and your presence is very calming and very grounded and centered and the way that you share and it, it isn't going to be for everyone people who want like a quick answer but those who come and join us in this journey and follow along they're going to get imbued with a new sense of how they can be in relationship to their own finances to their own um, economic freedom and also to this freedom as a soul as a sovereign being um, as an enlightened consciousness and um, so it's really beautiful the way that you've put this together thank you so much i really appreciate it so thank you so much um, this has just really been a precious journey i'm so glad we did this we've been kind of working up to it for a few weeks and thank you for all the work you put in behind the scenes to put this together you're very your daily meditations and practices make you a very grounded person and um, i'm honored to be connected with your journey many many thanks to you too it's very very mutual <laughs> and thanks to everyone for listening and watching and playing along with us and let's co-create absolutely yes <laughs> we'll put plenty of great links under the video and we want to remind you to breathe smile and love and live your highest path live the journey of your heart live the knowing of your soul absolutely okay see you soon ciao If you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are, oh, now, child, please don't frown. You can choose a new vibration and these words can take you far. I am a 21st century superhuman and I know that the answers are inside. 21st century superhuman now, now, now is the time.